Hi, I'm calling you today from the CLL and H Model Railroad workbench. I picked up a little Mac rail bus um, on eBay. Paid about $140, I think, for it. Didn't look like uh, on eBay that it had been run very much. Um, wheels look really good. Um, got it apart here a little bit to investigate what I was going to be in store for. But a uh, little information on the rail bus. Um, the Model ACX rail bus was first introduced by Mac in 1923. It represented quite an image and quite an improvement over former models. The four-wheel rear truck was used at the urging of all the railway engineers, which gave better tracking than the single pair of wheels formerly used on other models. In common with the Mack trucks of this period, the ACX had the characteristic bull dog hood front end. Well known trademark of the Mack International Motors. A Mack Model AC80 horsepower gasoline engine was used for the power plant. The seating capacity of these were about 31 to 35 people and weighed approximately 29,000 pounds. Today there is only one of these rail buses left in operation. This car operates on California Western Railroad in the Northern California area at Fort Bragg. Owing to a wreck in 1961, the characteristic bulldog hood has been replaced with a new hood from the California Western's shops. Otherwise, the M80, as it is designated, looks as it did when it came fresh from the Mack plant in 1925. Dubbed the skunk by local residents along the line, it is ridden by thousands of tourists each summer who come to ride and view the majestic redwood forest through which the railroad passes. So it's a little history on the Mack rail bus. Um, so in this model, it had an open frame motor which has no power. I mean, it's very weak. Um, I tried it on my DC test track and it pulled but I barely touched it and it stalled. So I'm going to upgrade it with this 6150 um, RPM mini enclosed motor, can motor and uh, the stall on this is really impressive for such a little motor you really got to clamp down on that shaft to get it to stall so I think really um, it's going to be a good little motor for this um, we're also going to uh, put a TCU 2200 sound decoder in it which is the gasoline model um, it's called the uh, gas or other um, decoder. So we're going to make this DCC which is going to be interesting because the manufacturer made the frame as one of the poles for the motor um, as DC. Plus we've got a couple things here where we're going to be touching um, when the truck moves it's going to be touching the frame so that could short it out so one leg is power through the chassis the other leg is on the front truck solder to the front truck on the opposite side so that's the DC I think we can use this as one of the poles for the uh, DCC just got to make sure it's well insulated against the frame and what I think I'm going to do here with this uh, rear truck is I'll go ahead and use the pickup on the one side and I, uh, isolate the truck from the frame so I'll put a insulating washer between the two I'm going to go ahead and and recess this frame a little bit so if this does move it doesn't touch it Okay and then uh, I'll install the motor, I'll probably use a wedge of some sort, um, maybe out of wood or plastic and probably set the, the motor about this area right here. 
Now the decoder, and I'm also going to put a um, keep alive in it, will be on the inside roof panel of the rail bus. And to hide all the wires and hide all the mechanics of this, I'm going to go ahead and put windows in it and frost the windows. Oh, and also it's going to get a paint job. So um, that's down the, the road a little bit here. So we've got to get this to where it's actually going to function with a decoder. I don't want it shorting out every time I turn around and blow in the decoder. So it's going to take a little engineering here and some thought on, uh, on this. But I want to use this truck because it is set up for the uh, rail bus. And I think it will work just fine. They also used uh, a rubber band to drive the second set of wheels, as you can see here. Um, it's a, it's, well, I shouldn't say a rubber band, it's more of a uh, spring that they used. So, kind of interesting. I think it'll work fine, though, in, in what we're going to do. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the truck off and get that set up and see if we can isolate it. I'll use my own meter and see if it works like that, like I'm hoping. And I'll just start putting it together and building it. Um, and I'll show it to you after I'm done at that point. We'll be right back. Alright, looks like we're back here with some things that uh, I did. Um, one of the mounts here, or the mount that holds the truck, is brass and what I used believe it or not for an insulator <laughs> is a uh, cookie lid which is plastic it's smooth it's it's very thin and um, pretty durable so what I did is I coated this mount with that piece of plastic so I just cut a small piece out Drilled a hole down the center. I just super glued it. Now it's insulated from the from the truck to the chassis. So that worked out pretty good. Went ahead and soldered my lead onto my truck for the rear pickup. And I'm going to go ahead and use the original soldered lead from the front truck. So to put this on also, it had a uh, brass bolt or a brass screw. I wasn't going to be able to use that because then I'd, I'd lose all of my uh, insulation. So I went down to my hobby shop and I picked up some nylon screws and went ahead and got some, some nuts to go with it. I used the 172 um, bolts and nuts and so forth as you can see here so that will isolate it completely uh, from the track and from the pickups so I think we're we're on our way to actually getting this thing uh, looking good for the DCC I also prepped my body uh, to the to the uh, the, with a red scotch bright, I just uh, kind of roughed it up a little bit just to kind of get some of the tarnish off, make it shiny and uh, so the, the sealer will, will uh, adhere. What I use for the paint is I use the fine primer surfacer and uh, it's just wet on wet. I just put it on, let it flash off uh, just a couple coats on the surface and then what I'm going to do is I'm going with this company here it's called uh, Alclad 2 and I'm using a pale gold which is the closest to the, the brass as I could get they actually have uh, a brass color but it's really dark it's more of an antique brass and I didn't want to do my locomotive with that so I like the brass colors um, Instead of going with black or something, I like the brass. Um, most of my brass engines are uh, in the brass color. Um, either I purchase it that way or I, I, I make them 
brass in color. So, um, one of the things I wanted to also show you was the Chino back shop. This is the gentleman that I got the motor from, which I mentioned a little earlier. Um, this tiny little powerhouse for a motor. He's got everything you need to remotor your uh, locomotives uh, with can motors, um, all different sizes, and and uh, if he hasn't done it. Um, I'd be surprised. Um, so you can pretty much rest assured whatever he sends you is going to be the one that's going to fit that, that locomotive. So he does a really nice nice job on the selection and he's a great guy to talk to. So um, his name's Anthony. So give him a call, give him a shout out if you need any new motors or whatever. But uh, next step is I'm going to go ahead and paint the, the chassis, get it painted. Paint the body, get it all painted, and I'll come back and we can kind of start some of this uh, reassembly. And um, so I'll talk to you when I get back from there. All right, done a quite a bit on the the little uh, Mac bus here. Uh, went ahead and painted it, and it came out really nice. Um, one of the tricks to getting a good finish is using grease and wax remover. Take a paintbrush and uh, really get it get it cleaned up because there's probably going to be a lot of oils and greases from years of lubrication and and uh, servicing. So you need to get all that off of there. Your paint will not stick. This came out really nice, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, painted the bottom section of the the frame. Didn't paint the top section. Uh, left it just uh, brass. But anyway, I wanted to uh, show you the screw, the nylon screw that I put in. As you can see it right there. I just did it in place of the metal screw or the brass screw that they had given from the factory. I went ahead and I put in a washer and then put a nut on it. I touched the nylon threads with a soldering iron just to kind of foul up the thread a little bit so it kind of locks that that nut onto the, the the bolt and then it won't back off. I made a little wedge here as you can see and then I just use CV glue to to glue everything on there. Um, if you don't want to use CV glue, you can use the five minute epoxy. Um, I've had pretty good luck with the, the CV staying where it's supposed to. Um, this isn't going to be a high torque motor where it's going to be really pulling a lot so I'm not going to worry about it, it breaking the, the glue loose. Um, if it does, I'll just put some five minute epoxy on it. But Next I've got to put um, my silicone uh, tube in this so it connects the motor and the gear. And then I start my Soundtrax decoder, just so you know that this is the one I'm using. It's the Baldwin and other diesels. So it's got a gas powered uh, section in there that I can program so it'll sound like a, a gas engine. We'll, we'll go through that after I uh, program I'll show it to you. So anyway now I just gotta wire everything up. Um, I've got the, the one side contact already. I'm gonna run it right through the center here and then uh, we're pretty much ready to go. So I'll be back in a few minutes and we will go over what I did on the wiring. I am going to put an LED light in the front of the cab here and uh, I think how I'm going to get a bulb shape in it because it is so small I got to use a micro SMD. I'm going to cut with a little die, uh, mini die grinder I'm going to cut the end of a three millimeter LED so I can have a lens and I'm going to stick the the lens in there. I think that'll fit just fine and super glue it in. Put the uh, SMD behind it 
and I think I'll have a nice little light there. So anyway, I've still got to put uh, all of my windows in and uh, I'll show you what I did when that happens. Okay, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm getting a few more things done on the rail bus and as you can see I got the decoder in. If you're wondering what speaker, this is the speaker right here, decoders underneath it, uh, for wondering what speaker I'm using, it's out of an iPhone 7 I believe. Got off of eBay for about four bucks. I buy them in quantity so um, they're relatively inexpensive so you can get those speakers. They're very thin they sound really good and uh, you know they're easy to wire up so each wire to you know, the purple wires on the soundtracks to each contact and that's all you've got to do here's my current keeper I moved it up forward because of the placement that it's going to need um, to keep the motor from hitting it um, put the new weight in it um, I also have um, installed the windows so I used the clear plastic off of my cookie sheet again I, I use those for my windows they work really well and then I sprayed the the plastic with some acrylic matte coating I got this at uh, Hobby Lobby I think I don't know six bucks or something seven bucks and then I just super glued them in and uh, I think they came out really nice so um, also what I did here I mentioned I was gonna put an SMD light in so the lights inside here um, and I cut a three millimeter LED a regular LED I cut the top or the, the ball of the lens off and then I super glued it in to give me a lens on this so that came out really nice so next up is I'm going to program it um, and we'll see how that all pans out I will uh, uh, get the video of that once it's all programmed um, I won't throw all that in until uh, the last part of the video all right, we'll be back in a minute. Well, here's our Mac rail bus. Uh, I've got it all programmed. It's put together, and so this will be its maiden voyage on DCC. So let's put some power to the track. It is my test track, so we're going to have to put some power on. There it goes. We've got some good sound. Here's fire headlight. That's good. Bell's working too. Do the horn. Let's run her up. See how well she does. Here we go. That's it. Four on my NCE cab. Do a reverse. Yeah, I really like the way this has come out. It's a good looking little model. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop me a line there. And, um, Make sure you subscribe. I'll try to be putting some more of these on there, um, other projects that I do. 
And again, I appreciate your time. Hope you have a good day. Thanks.